church family, I want to take just a moment and invite you to a very special time together tomorrow evening. I want you to join me at 5 p.m. on our Facebook page or either on our website for communion at home. If you've not yet had an opportunity to swing by and pick up one of our prepackaged communion cups, we invite you just to use saltine or oyster crackers as well as some grape juice. But this is going to be a time for us on Christmas Eve as we think about the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We're reminded of his sacrificial death on Calvary's cross, his resurrection, and we're looking forward to his second coming. I hope to see you tomorrow night at 5 p.m. Well, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for taking time out of your Wednesday evening to join us here for our time of Bible study and prayer. I apologize. I had the mic turned off there, and I, I, I caught myself. So uh, hope you've had a great day, and I'm looking forward to the time that we have to come together tonight, not only to uh, spend a few minutes in prayer, but also to be able to open God's Word and to continue this series that we started just a few weeks ago uh, simply entitled, All I Want for Christmas. So tonight we'll be looking at the third gift. We'll be opening that gift. And uh, I'm excited about that, and I hope you are as well. But as we, uh, before we begin our time in Bible study, I want to mention a few prayer requests, things that we need to be praying for, that I would invite you to pray for as well. If you will pray for Ananda Jones' dad, Mike Langdon, uh, if you will remember him in your prayers, he had uh, back surgery today, and the surgery went well, and he's recovering from that surgery. So I know that they would appreciate your prayers very much. Also, if you'll uh, remember Anita Hennett's family, uh, her dad passed away today, so we want to lift that family up and pray that you would, uh, that the Lord would be with them, and we want to remember them during this time as well. Also, if you can continue to pray for Mr. Graham and Miss Brenda Pickett's grandson, Brandon Baldwin. I know he's in need of some, uh, some surgery. We mentioned that last week. Uh, this is some risky surgery, so we just pray that the Lord's will be done in that situation. Also, let me invite you to pray for uh, Richard Durham and his family, uh, and his dad specifically, uh, who's currently in the hospital, Mr. Jack. Uh, we want to pray for their family tonight, and I hope that you'll uh, remember them in prayer, lift them up to the Lord as well. Then also let me mention tonight, uh, we are uh, have the possibility for some severe weather tomorrow. And I know that's not one of the things that we like to think about. I don't like severe weather. I'm just going to be honest with you and upfront. But just in thinking about this and the, the risk that we're under here uh, in our part of the, the county, in our part of the state of North Carolina, we want to lift this up to the Lord tonight, recognizing if you've been with me through our journey through the Gospel of Mark, uh, we've talked about the fact that, that Jesus is uh, Lord over nature. He has power over nature. He has power over demons. He has power over sickness, and yes, praise God, he even has power over death. So we've got to keep in mind that God is sovereign, and I pray that he'll see us through these storms. So if you will, just bow with me now, and we'll go to the Lord in prayer. We'll pray for these requests, and then we'll pray for our time together tonight in God's Word. Let's pray. Father, we come before you tonight just wanting to thank you for this time of the year. When we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we're thankful for the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross 2,000 years ago when he came and he lived the life that we should have lived. He died the death that we were condemned to die. He resurrected from the grave on the third day, conquering death, hell, and the grave. And we recognize that our hope tonight is in Jesus and Jesus alone. Lord, we want to pray for the requests that have been mentioned. We pray for uh, Anita's family, that you would just be with her and her family, and comfort them during this uh, difficult time in the passing of her dad, that you would just wrap your arms around them in a special way, and God, just be with them. Lord, we also want to pray that you would continue to be with Nanda's dad. We thank you that the surgery today on his back went well, and uh, we just pray for the recovery, uh, not only today, but in the days to come, that you would just be with him, and that it would be a speedy recovery. Lord, we also want to pray tonight for uh, uh, Richard Derm's dad, Mr. Jack, we lift him up to you and just pray that you would be with him. And just continue to work in his life and bring healing to his body. And I pray you would continue to be with Richard and them as well. Lord, we also want to pray tonight for Brandon. We lift him up to you, Lord. We've been praying for him for some time now. 
And God, we want to continue to lift him up to you. Pray that you would just be with him and his family and that you would uh, be with the doctors and the surgeons as they think through uh, the, the the necessary procedures that are needed next, Lord. We just pray that you would be with them in a special way. And God, we also pray tonight as we turn our eyes and our hearts to the Word of God that you would continue to open our eyes and our hearts to the truth of your Word as we continue to look at these uh, special gifts, Lord, these three gifts that we've been diving into in this series entitled All I Want for Christmas. I pray you would lead us and direct us now, and may Jesus be glorified, for it's in his name I pray. Amen. One thing I want to do before we dive into our Bible study tonight is mention just a couple things that are are happening. If you'll check in, as always, uh, we're going to continue to do this in the uh, the weeks to come. That'll just help us to get some exposure there on Facebook. So if you've not yet done that, if you can do so uh, either uh, following this Bible study, that, that would be a big help as well. Uh, let me also mention, I did not update those slides, but praise God, we have uh, met our goal here for the Baptist Children's Home, so thank you so much for your faithful giving, and we just want to rejoice in that tonight. Also, we're continuing to collect monies for our Lottie Moon offering. I don't have the most recent total for that. This was from last week, but the goal for that is $2,800. Then let me also mention that uh, we will be... Uh, having a, a called business meeting next Wednesday, December the 30th at 8 p.m. Uh, we're excited about this. Our personnel committee has formulated a job description for an interim music director. Uh, you should have received that via email uh, both last week as well as this week. If you did not get a copy of that, if you'll contact Miss Debbie Teachy at the church office, she'll be happy to see that you get a copy of that. But that's the job description that we'll be voting on next Wednesday. So it should be uh, a fairly quick meeting, and I hope you'll be a part of that for all that are members of our church. All right, let's see. Uh, let me m- mention once again the podcast that's available on any of the popular uh, podcast platforms, uh, be it Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, uh, Spotify. You can check out the uh, the messages, uh, the weekly Sunday messages on either of those podcasts. And then be in prayer as well for our uh, services this coming Sunday our Bible study at 10 a.m., our worship service at 11 a.m., and uh, then also uh, be in prayer for our time together tomorrow night. You saw just a quick video a moment ago about our time together tomorrow night. That'll be at 5 p.m., and that is simply uh, entitled Our Communion at Home. So we're looking forward to that. It'll be short and it'll be sweet, but it'll be a special time together. All right. Well, if you will go ahead and grab your Bibles. Tonight we're going to be in the book of Philippians. So if you'll turn to Philippians, Philippians chapter 1 is where we're going to be for the next few moments. Philippians chapter 1, we're going to be looking at verses 3 through 11. Tonight we'll look at the third of uh, these three gifts. Uh, These gifts that I've mentioned over the past few weeks are gifts that will not let you down. Uh, They're gifts that you can cherish. Uh, They're gifts that uh, you will not want to put away on a shelf. You will not want to pack away in a box. Uh, They're gifts that will give you comfort and satisfaction. So just a quick recap, the first gift that we opened was the gift of hope. The gift of hope. Last Wednesday, we looked at the second gift. The second gift was the gift of peace. All right, now I know some of our kids are already ready to open some of the gifts before Christmas. And if you're like them, you're ready to open this gift as well. Well, here we go. Here's the third gift that we're going to open tonight. All right, the third gift is the gift of joy, the gift of joy. So grab your Bibles there, Philippians chapter 1. I'm going to read these verses for us. Philippians chapter 1, verses 3 through 11. The Bible says, beginning in verse 3, I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always offering prayer with joy in my every prayer for you all in view of our participation in the gospel from the first day until now, 
For I am confident of this very thing, that he who, who has begun a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. For it is only right for me to feel this way about you all, because I have you in my heart, since both in my imprisonment and in my defense and confirmation of the gospel, you all are partakers of grace with me. For God is my witness, how I long for you all with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this I pray, that your love may abound still more and more in real knowledge and all discernment, so that you may approve the things that are excellent, in order to be sincere and blameless until the day of Christ, having been filled with the fruit of righteousness which comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Now I want you to know, brethren, that my circumstances have turned out for the greater progress of the gospel, so that my imprisonment in the cause of Christ has become well known throughout the whole Praetorium Guard and to everyone else. So tonight we're going to look at the third gift, and we're going to be focusing on the gift of joy. Now you know people today are searching for joy, and people are looking in a variety of different places for joy. However, oftentimes instead of finding joy, Many people just simply settle for happiness. But you know, happiness and joy are not the same thing. They're not. Happiness is based on your circumstances. And if you have good health, if you have food, if you have shelter, if you have the things that you want, perhaps you'll say, I'm, I'm a happy person. However, when these things are taken away from you, or when certain things don't go your way, that happiness quickly turns into despair. And the re reality is this. You don't need happiness. What you need is joy. Because unlike happiness, joy is not based on your circumstances. Joy is not based on what you have. It's not even based on what you get or what you do not get. Joy is based on whom you know and to whom you belong. And if you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, then you're a child of God. And listen to me, you have joy. You have joy because Jesus, who you have not seen, you love, though now you see him not yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Satisfaction and pure joy come from Jesus Christ alone. And once you have Jesus, or better yet, once Jesus has you, the next question to ask is, what do I do? What's next? What's the next thing for me to do since I have Jesus. Well, another thing you could think of is what do you do with the joy that you've been given? Because you have joy if you were in Jesus and you simply act upon that joy. So what I want to do is I want to share with you five characteristics that should be evident in your life if you have the joy of the Lord. If you'll grab your notepad and a pen or a pencil, I would invite you to write these down. If you have the joy of the Lord, you're going to have, first and foremost, a thankful attitude. A thankful attitude. We find this in verses 3 through 5. A thankful attitude. Now, I remember uh, growing up, my time as a student at Clayton High School. Uh, the year was 1989, the last year that the Clayton Comets won the state football championship. I mean, I remember those guys that played on that team, Jonathan Jenkins, Darren Banks, Rod Clark, Brad Langdon, Clint Eaves, just to name a few. And although the Comets had an awesome team, the one thing that stood out all that year was the theme, attitude makes the difference. I mean, when it comes to attitude, the school's philosophy was this, that a player must show a positive attitude both in and out of school. They must be willing to do basically anything that will be good for the team. You see, back then, the Comets had a great head coach, Gary Fowler, had a great coaching staff. They had great players. But the key ingredient that entire season, and one of the things that made them a winning team, was their attitude. Attitude does make all the difference. And attitude, as it made a difference back then in 1989, it also made a difference uh, way back when Paul was writing these words, when Paul penned these words under the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Paul said, I thank my God 
in all my remembrance of you. Paul had a good attitude. Paul was thankful. He had a thankful attitude. He was thankful for the Philippians, as you discovered in the verses that I just read. He was thankful for their friendship. He was thankful for their partnership in the gospel ministry. He was thankful for the fact that they supported him. They loved Paul, and they gave to him generously. You know, when you give generously to the Lord, we're able to advance the gospel of the kingdom of God. We're able to proclaim the good news of the glorious gospel. We're doing that tonight via Facebook. So if you share this, perhaps someone will watch this and they'll be exposed to the gospel and they'll hear good news. We need to hear some good news. Amen. You know, 2020 has been filled with bad news, but the good news that's been consistent throughout 2020 is the fact that Jesus is alive and well. He does not change and he's given us the glorious gospel to take forward and to boldly proclaim. So when Paul thought about the Philippians, he thanked God for them. I mean, think about the people that God's placed in your life or the churches or the church that God has placed in your life that you are thankful for. And although Paul displayed a thankful attitude in a variety of different ways, the means by which he gives thanks here is through prayer. So he had a thankful attitude and he expressed that through prayer. You know, if you have the joy of the Lord, you should also have a thankful attitude. I should have a thankful attitude. And this is an attitude that we should have not just on a Wednesday evening and not just on a Sunday morning, but it should be the type of attitude that you and I have every single day. Now, it doesn't mean that we're going to be perfect. My goodness, for crying out loud. I mean, I miss the mark a lot of days, perhaps most days. But I'm thankful in spite of my sin in spite of the things that I say, think, and do at times that are displeasing to the Lord, that I can ask for His forgiveness, that He'll forgive me, that He'll cast my sins as far as the east is from the west, and that He will uh, restore unto me the joy of my salvation, and that He'll help me to have a thankful attitude. All right, here's the second thing I want you to write down. Not only should you have a thankful attitude because of the joy that you have, and because of who Jesus is and what he's done in your life, you should also live a life devoted to prayer, a life devoted to prayer. We find this again in verses 4 and 5. Always offering prayer, Paul says, with joy in my every prayer for you all. So people tend to overcomplicate prayer. I'm, I'm as guilty as anybody for this. And uh, the power of prayer is, is oftentimes misunderstood. I want you to know tonight, though, that prayer as a Christian, is your most powerful weapon. It's the most powerful tool you have in your toolbox. Prayer is just simply communication with God. And you can pray anywhere, anytime, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It doesn't matter if you're in the lowest valley or if you're on the highest mountain. There's no time, no place that you cannot go before the Lord in prayer. So prayer is nothing more than a person communicating and having dialogue with the living God. The Bible tells us that we can go before the throne of grace with boldness and with confidence. Now, it amazes me to know that the very God that spoke the world into existence, the very God that flung the stars into space, if you've been watching the news or watching the sky, you've seen these planets that are coming together. Some people refer to this as the Bethlehem star. But think about it. God flung those stars into space, and the God that, that flung those stars into space, listen to me, He desires to have a relationship with you, and not just that relationship, to have sweet fellowship. And you and I have fellowship with God by reading His Word, by getting into His Word, allowing His Word to get into us, and by spending time with Him in prayer. In prayer. Notice the word here, fellowship, in verse 5. It's the Greek word koinonia. And you see this repeated throughout the book of Philippians. If you study the book of Philippians, you'll find this over and over. But fellowship simply means partnership. Partnership. So Paul also helps us to understand the importance of prayer. He was persistent in his prayer. And what a challenge for you and me to spend time in prayer. Now Paul... He loved the people of Philippi, he loved this church, and he loved them, and his love was expressed through the means of prayer. 
That's one of the ways that he expressed his love for the Philippian church, for those in Philippi. So I want you to stop and think for just a moment about your prayer life. How often do you pray? How often do you pray? Three times a day at breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Lord, thank you for this food. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Is that the extent of your prayer? Or are you praying continually throughout the day? Or do you have uninterrupted times when you spend with just you and the Lord? Now, that's a challenging thing to do, and I'll be the first to confess that I'm not the best at that. But I know that I need to spend more time praying. I want you to think about the types of prayer that you pray. How often are your prayers centered around people? How often are your prayers centered around your needs and the needs of others? Yikes. I mean, what a word for us to heed, amen? I mean, could it be that you often find yourself praying self-centered prayers? Lord, help me to have a good day. Lord, bless my family and keep me safe. Lord, help me to do well with this or with that. Lord, help me to get this job or that job. Lord, help me to, to, you know, to, to do this or that, whatever it may be. And I'm not saying you don't pray those things. Please don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying you don't pray those things. Definitely we want to pray for those things. We want to pray to have a good day. But our prayer life should not just be centered around those things. I mean, if I'm honest, lots of times uh, the prayers that I offer are self-centered prayers. I mean, there are wants and needs that, that we have, and we have to really think about that, and we really have to think about what is most important. So think about your prayer life for a moment. Let me ask you this. This is convicting. How many times have you said to someone, I'll pray for you, or someone has come up to you and said, hey, will you pray for me? And your response was, sure, I'll pray for you. And then how many times have you walked away and forgot to pray for that person or forgot what that person even mentioned to you to pray about? You know, I've discovered something in recent years that's helped me greatly. As a matter of fact, uh, it's something that's, that's really been life-changing. Uh, lots of times now when people ask me to pray for them, instead of writing that down to pray for them later, I'll just say, hey, can I pray for you right now? And not that it's a bad thing. It's not a bad thing to write down a prayer request to pray for, but uh, we can take care of that in the moment when somebody says, hey, can you pray for me? Say, yeah, yeah, I'll pray for you. Let me pray for you right now. And I've, I've discovered that that's been one of the, the best practices in my life uh, is to pray right then and right there. All right, so Paul's life, again, was not centered around these uh, individual self-centered prayers. No, Paul's prayer was focused. It was focused on Jesus. It was focused on others. And that makes me think about the joy principle. You've perhaps heard me share this before. The joy principle. It's a principle that you and I can apply each and every day. What is the joy principle, Pastor? Well, it's really easy. It's Jesus, others, and yourself. Jesus, others, and yourself. I mean, what a great strategy to implement uh, for life in general, and especially when it comes to praying, that we're to put Jesus first, we're to put others second, and then we're to put ourselves behind them. So not only does Paul pray for the Philippians, he does so with joy. I mean, Paul was a man, after he met Jesus, whose life was filled with joy. His life was filled with joy. And uh, he expressed that again through the means of prayer. Look at what he says in verse 4. Always, always offering prayer with joy in my every prayer for you all. Paul could say to the Philippians, Hey, I'm praying for you or I will pray for you. And you could rest assured Paul did just that. He prayed for them. It was also not a burden for Paul to pray. I mean, prayer is not a burden. He had the attitude that I'll, I'll pray and I, I'll pray and I'll, I'll do so with joy. It wasn't one of those attitudes that I'll pray if I get around to it or when I get around to it. No, he understood the joy that comes from the Lord when he takes the time to pray for others, for their needs, and he understands also that it's a blessing. 
So Paul was more than well aware of that, and I think these are some great lessons that we can take from our study tonight as we think about and we focus on the joy of the Lord. So it's an honor and a privilege to pray. Let me ask you, is your life devoted to prayer, and do you see prayer as a joy? Now let's also look at some of the specifics of Paul's prayer. Paul was thankful to God, again, for their fellowship, for their partnership in the gospel. I mean, these folks in Philippi, they understood uh, the gospel in the the very beginning uh, when Paul first met them, and even as he penned this letter, They were standing firm in the gospel. You see, the gospel must also be the driving force behind everything that you and I do. I mean, we tend to think of the gospel as just being for the unsaved, for those who do not yet have a relationship with Jesus. And and I'll never forget this. I remember years ago uh, at a, a Fort Caswell camp, we took a bunch of students to. I remember a gentleman that was preaching. His name was Ed Newton. He said something that really just grabbed my heart. He said this, The gospel is not just for the unsaved. The gospel is for the saved. We need to preach the gospel to ourselves each day. You and I need to preach the gospel to ourselves every day. And I need to be reminded of that. We've been hammering this home week after week as we've been moving through our sermon series, uh, Servant and Savior. We're going through the Gospel of Mark on Sunday mornings. We'll be doing that uh, for the next uh, several months. Uh, We're in chapter 7 right now, so uh, I'm excited to continue this journey. But uh, the Gospel was at the forefront of Paul's ministry and the forefront of what he shares here in the book of Philippians. It also reminds me of what Paul said concerning the Gospel in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Write these verses down, if you will. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. Paul says, Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received, and in which you stand, by which also you were saved, if you hold fast that word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. He says, For I delivered to you first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Paul understood the joy that comes from the gospel. Hey, don't ever get over the gospel. Preach the gospel to yourself each day. Preach the gospel to others. And then strive to live out the gospel in your lives every single day. I mean, that'll change things, amen? That'll give you joy, joy that perhaps you've been searching for. So we see the results of joy are a thankful attitude and a life devoted to prayer. A life devoted to prayer. So these are two of the five characteristics that should be evident in your life if you have the joy of the Lord. Well, this seems like a good place to kind of land the plane. You know, as preachers, that's one of the things uh, we we look to do with every message or every sermon. And I know there's a lot of folks that look for us to land the plane probably sometimes sooner than we actually land the plane, if you know what I'm talking about. Amen. Uh, But this seems like a good place to kind of land the plane for the time being. Lord willing, next Wednesday, we'll close out the year by looking at the second part of this third gift, the gift of joy. There's actually five characteristics that I want to share with you. And we'll look at the next three, Lord willing, next Wednesday evening. Now, don't forget to join us tomorrow night right here on Facebook, 5 p.m. for Communion at Home. It's going to be a special time together with our church family. Uh, Prior to us meeting at 5, I would invite you to go ahead and grab the uh, the prepackaged communion cups. If you weren't able to pick one of those up, as you saw in the video just a few moments ago, You can use uh, saltine crackers or some oyster crackers and some grape juice. Uh, But it's going to be a special time tomorrow evening at 5 p.m., and I hope you'll make plans to join us for that. Well, let me pop over here to Facebook and say hey to some folks that may have joined us tonight. Uh, Betty and Ricky, good to see you all on. I hope you have a Merry Christmas as well. Thank you for uh, shouting that out on Facebook. Uh, Hello to my mom and dad. Good to see you all on tonight. 
Thank you for joining us. Suzanne, Merry Christmas to you as well. Thank you for tuning in. Pastor uh, Jimmy, Miss Linda, good to see y'all. Merry Christmas to you as well. Hello to uh, Dennis and Sherry. Merry Christmas to you all as well. Thank you for joining us. Miss Gracie, thank you for tuning in. Hope you have a Merry Christmas as well. Uh, Roger and Cindy, thank you for tuning in. Merry Christmas to y'all. Denise, good to see you tonight. Hope you have a Merry Christmas as well. Let's see who else may have joined us tonight. If I didn't call your name out, if you'll just say hey there in the comments, I'll give you a shout out tonight here on Facebook. That's all the names that I see on there this evening. But uh, for those of you who joined us and didn't mention anything in the comments, again, we thank you for being a part of our Wednesday night Bible study. Well, I hope you have a good rest of the night. And uh, Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow evening right here at 5 p.m. for communion at home. Love you all. I'll see you then.